Oh, what's this? What's in this box? Some fancy wrapped up. Hang on. Oh yeah, it's engine time. Thanks to Adam Drake in this video. What's up guys? Welcome back to our 8XT build. This is going to be our last actual build um, or assembly of the truck. Uh, as you can see, we're installing our engine in this video. Uh, a couple other things that we're gonna do, clutch, air filter, uh, body. Uh, we're just gonna cut out the body and put it on the truck, but it's gonna be a bit of a longer episode just cause there's a lot of slow moving stuff going on in this video. So make sure you stay tuned and I hope you enjoy. So right off the bat, we're gonna be installing our clutch. Now, uh, most clutches on A-scale buggies, you have buggies and truggies, you have a aluminum clutch and then a composite clutch uh, shoe. Clutch shoe is what they're called. And you use a different spring for those different clutch shoes because then they'll uh, hit the clutch bell harder or softer depending on what spring you have and it'll essentially make your initial power on your truck either uh, softer or firmer depending on what kind of setup you run. So there's a lot of different setups you can go into with a clutch, which we're not gonna do in this video. Uh, we just stuck to the kit setup for the clutch on the truck. Now a little bit of insight onto what engine we're gonna be using. Right now, in the assembly of this video, we're using a older 2101 TIE Testman Edition OS Speed. Um, this is just an engine that I had in my cabinet and I hadn't broke it in, I hadn't run it yet. It was kind of just like a backup engine. So I went ahead and sent that to Adam Drake and Adam does an awesome break-in service. So we had him do a break-in on that. And we'll, uh, we'll do a little bit more on Adam's break-in service in the future, maybe with a new engine. Um, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Maybe it'll be in episode 10, maybe it'll be further down the road. Uh, we'll find out, but that's just the engine we're using right now. It is a temporary engine, so we won't be using it for the full life of this truck. We got our clutch fully wrapped up there. Now we're gonna be installing our collet, which is a little brass sleeve that slides over the um, engine or uh, shaft of the engine. And your uh, clutch sits on top of that now. Some of you are probably gonna cringe about what I'm about to do, but this does not harm the engine at all. This is a way of getting your collet tight. Uh, so you can stick a zip, t a zip tie through the top of the engine in through the back exhaust exit on the engine. And basically what that'll do is when you go to tighten down this uh, flywheel nut for the clutch, the piston will hit on that zip tie and you'll be able to tighten it. Now you'll tighten it to a point where it snaps the zip tie like that and there's nothing wrong with that. It's not gonna harm the engine. Uh, it's just a way of getting that uh, clutch initially tightened before you tighten it the way I'm about to right now. So what I just grabbed was a torque wrench. Uh, in the manual, it calls for 15 newton meters for a torque setting on the clutch. So a lot of you, I'm sure, don't have a torque wrench laying around. So just tighten that flywheel nut as tight down as you can. Uh, you're not gonna hurt anything getting it tight and I'm sure you're not going to be able to tighten it too much to where you're going to hurt it if that makes sense so you don't want to super tight it but you want to make it fairly tight so you that clutch doesn't come loose uh, make sure to use probably red Loctite is what I used on mine uh, just to keep it nice and tight from it coming loose now we are putting our shims in for our clutch belt uh, what the clutch bell does is it usually spins freely on the same shaft that the clutch is on, but then when the motor spins the clutch, those clutch shoes expand and they rub the inside of this clutch bell, and that's what gives you the forward motion on an A-scale. So 
So if you walk up to a nitro A scale vehicle and you spin the wheels and they spin freely, it's spinning that clutch bell because the clutch shoes aren't engaged because the motor's not moving, uh, if that makes sense for some of you guys. Using a bit of blue Loctite on our end bell nut here, or end bell screw, sorry. Make sure it spins freely and then tighten our flywheel down and make sure it's nice and tight. Now it's not going to spin the freest right now. Once those bearings further break in, it will spin even freer. Uh, so that's just one thing to keep an eye on over time. And then right here we're going to be using a quick release engine mount. So basically what this does is it is easier to take the engine in and out of the car so you don't have to reset the gear mesh every time. Uh, you leave the uh, engine brace or engine mounts mounted in the car and then there's a separate piece that screws into that mount that will screw into the motor so you can just unscrew those separate pieces uh, the ones we're going to be putting in right now you can unscrew those pieces and those will stay attached to the motor while the other part stays attached to the chassis just makes it a lot easier to get the engine in and out of the car and not having to set the gear mesh like I said. So right there you can see those are the engine mount pieces that stay attached to the engine. You don't need to worry about trying to line those up. You just screw them in as tight as you can. Make sure to use Loctite because you don't want those bolts coming loose. And then those pieces that we're screwing on now will screw to the chassis or screw to the chassis mount. Putting our carb restrictor in. Now we're getting our air filter all set up here. The cool thing about Losi air filters is they sell pre-oiled air filters which is a great idea. You make, sh make sure you want to have a good amount of oil on your air filter. You don't want it dry and you also don't want it too dirty. So it's kind of nice you can just buy those pre-oiled uh, air filters. It comes with a pre-filter and a filter itself which is basically the big outer ring is called the pre-filter and the smaller ring on the inside is your filter. Uh, so it comes with two of those both pre-filtered. I think it's like four in a bag. I definitely recommend picking those up if you're running the Nitro 8XT. Uh, if you're running it electric, you don't need to worry about that. So this is the air filter that comes in the kit. As you can see, it's already pre-oiled. And that's how it'll come if you buy those pre-oiled air filters. It'll come with that uh, blue goo on it, I guess. And there's our air filter. Attach that to the engine. That'll just go right over the carburetor. Get our exhaust pipe all set up here. We're using a, a OS exhaust pipe as well. With I believe a 75 millimeter manifold. Um, I'll probably jump up to an 85 millimeter manifold. Um, maybe in the next video here. That'll just give you a bit more torque on the truck instead of top end, uh, which you usually need a little bit more torque on a truck just because it's a bit heavier. Now I like to use needle nose pliers to get these springs attached. I usually just grab the hook on the other side of the spring, stretch around the engine, and hook it into the other side of the exhaust pipe. It makes it a lot easier than trying to do it with your hands. So now we're getting our engine mounts in that attach to the chassis. Uh, getting those chassis screws in there. Now these screws you should never have to remove. So I'm just using blue Loctite, but I guess if you wanted to use red Loctite just to make sure uh, that they don't come out, you can. Personally, I've used this blue Loctite and they've never loosened up on me, knock on wood. Uh, they've always stayed tight, so I think blue Loctite is fine, but if you're having a problem with them coming out, I would use red Loctite. 
get the rest of them installed here, and then I believe we're going to flip it over and put our engine in. Now I'm not tightening these down all the way just yet uh, because we are going to have to set the gear mesh. So I'm just getting the screw started in there a little bit loose and then I will go in and tighten them once we get the engine all installed here. Now what we're putting in right now is our exhaust pipe uh, mount and we're actually going to have to cut the mount that's on there. So we it usually comes a little bit long. Uh, just so um, it can fit any pipe. So we're gonna have to see where the pipe lines up here and then we're gonna mark it with a white paint marker and then go ahead, take it out and cut it off with a uh, fly or a cutting wheel on a Dremel. First, we're gonna go ahead and put uh, carb rubber bands on there or a return spring or a return rubber band. This is a big recommendation if you're running nitro to have a return spring or a return rubber band on your carburetor. And I'll show you up close here in a second. Uh, basically, if you lose connection with your radio and your engine is stuck wide open, that's how it'll stay. So you wanna make sure that your return rubber band returns on the actual carburetor and it doesn't just stick wide open. So right there I just marked out the uh, mud guard on the side of the chassis so we can dremel it out where we need to put the exhaust cut out for the exhaust pipe. Uh, that's a thing you'll have to do if you're running nitro. Uh, definitely don't leave that thing not cut because then your pipe's not going to sit flat and level. And right here as you can see like I said earlier we're going to go ahead and cut off our uh, exhaust mount so it's a little bit shorter, a little bit easier to get the uh, pipe in there and it's also not going to rub on our steering arms. So if you remember when we did our last video, I recommended leaving the exhaust tubing long or the fuel tubing and the pressure line tubing. I re recommended it leaving it long because you just don't know how much exhaust tubing you're gonna need. Uh, so as you can see, I've got a lot of excess exhaust tubing and we'll get in that a little bit. Uh, right now we're gonna be installing the motor to the actual uh, motor mount on the chassis or the engine mount. Uh, use just about the same amount of Loctite that you used for the engine mount screws on the bottom of the chassis. Grab a towel for some grip so I can tighten those screws down uh, just to make sure they're real tight and snug on the uh, engine. So right here, we're gonna go ahead and trim our lines. Now, I would suggest that you leave a little bit longer of a pressure line uh, because your engine is always changing pressure. Uh, your fuel's bouncing around in there. Your fuel level is consistently changing. 
uh, and then your exhaust line you can leave a tiny bit longer but uh, we cut off a little bit and like I said you leave them longer when you put them on the tank just so you have a little bit extra uh, just in case so they're not too short. So right here we're setting up our gear mesh. Now we've got a video on how to set up gear mesh if you need help doing that, but uh, I'm just doing this by feel. Make sure you have a good amount of play in the gear mesh, but not too much to where it's gonna slip. And then go ahead and tighten those bottom screws down on the chassis. All right, gear mesh is all tight. So now we're gonna tighten down the screws on the bottom of the chassis, uh, right centered where the uh, <clears throat> gear mesh was good. Jumping over to our body. Now this body does not come pre-cut because this is an electric and a nitro truggy. So what I would recommend is leaving it clear, placing it over the body where it needs to be, and then tracing around where you need to cut out. So first we're gonna do the engine here. Uh, take a body ream to like initialize your hole and then you can go ahead and use scissors or uh, we didn't use scissors we just used a dremel which most people will use but you can use scissors to cut this out it'll just be taking a little bit longer so skipping ahead to when we cut out the entire body here engine hole we have the exhaust tab hole uh, the exhaust coming out of the side of the body and then our fuel gun hole for the top of the body so that's going to finish off our basically our build series uh, for this truggy thank you guys for sticking along with us i uh, hope you enjoyed this build series we are going to do another episode to wrap up on number 10 it'll be a little bit of a special video kind of maybe going over what my thoughts are of the truck uh, i've been running it for a little bit so i'll give you guys some tips on what i think about it and then maybe we'll have a little bit of a special guest appearance like i mentioned earlier so Make sure you stay tuned, keep your eyes open for that next video, and thanks for watching guys.